We have a new Republican who decided to run for president to represent the Never Trump crowd. It's a guy named Evan McMullen. So naturally the question is, who the fuck is he? And the answer is, nobody knows. Not sure Evan McMullen even knows who Evan McMullen is. So Huffington Post explains here, McMullen is a former CIA agent and former chief policy director of the House Republican Conference. His resume includes stints at Goldman Sachs and the United Nations. He was educated at the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania, uh, a distinction he shares with Donald Trump and also Brigham Young University. For those of you who don't know, uh, Brigham Young University is, of course, the Mormon school. I think we did a story on them probably about a year, or maybe two years ago, about their code of conduct at the school. It is ridiculous. Like, for example, you're not allowed to hold hands with your boyfriend or girlfriend. These are fucking college students we're talking about. College students. Like, yeah, no, uh, we almost, they're this close to just flat out gender segregating over there. They say caffeine, you're not allowed to drink caffeine in the same way like you wouldn't be allowed to, you know, uh, drink alcohol before the age of 21. They say no caffeine. So, and it, it's a, kind of a fundamentalist Mormon school. And for those of you who don't know, fundamentalist Mormons believe, for example, in magic underwear. So I guess it's really not, not, uh, too out there to think that the people who believe in magic underwear might have some other really, really goofy rules. And that is what BYU gives us. So he went to BYU and they, they continue and say this, and this is probably the real reason why he's running for president. McMullen's ties to Utah, a state that has, has been uniquely resistant to Trump, could help turn the tide there. The timing of Monday's announcement is no accident either. An independent presidential candidate needs to collect a thousand signatures, a relatively low threshold by August 15th to appear on the ballot in Utah. He also, he could also have possibly have some impact in Idaho and Arizona. So people can look at this and originally uh, I'm one of them and just laugh and think, what? Like, what the fuck are you doing? It seems so out of left field. It seem, it, it's so impossible. The idea that somebody can come in, step in at this point in the race, and say, all right, I want to be president. I mean, we have Gary Johnson and Jill Stein. They've been at it for a while now, Green Party candidate and Libertarian Party candidate. And, you know, they're, they're really hammering away. And Gary Johnson in some polls is up to 12%. He's got to be up to 15% in order to get into the debates. Jill Stein in some polls is at 5%. Uh, she also would have to be at 15% to get in the debates. And it's like, well, they've been working at it for a long time. They're way more famous than this jackass. So what makes this guy think he can get in there and all of a sudden, yeah, you know, he can be president. He's not even going to get on all the ballots. I don't even know if he's going to get on most ballots. Well, the answer is he doesn't think he can be president. Nobody thinks he can be president. This guy is put up there by the Never Trump people, and he's put up there in order to try to jack some very important states from Trump. And if you do that, well, then you change the electoral map and you make it much more likely that Never Trump actually becomes a thing. So you prevent Trump, and, I mean, who's most likely to win? It ain't Donald Trump that wins. Hillary Clinton. Now... Again, that's not, it's not that clear cut because you have to hit 270 electoral uh, votes in order to win. What may happen is nobody gets 270, in which case the election goes to the House of Representatives and they get to pick the president. And uh, I mean, maybe the never Trump people know something I don't because they're all establishment Republican insiders. And maybe they know that if indeed it does go uh, to the House of Representatives, Maybe they pick Gary Johnson. Maybe they can cut some sort of deal. Now, I'm skeptical of that because when you talk to many House Republicans, House Republicans, uh, some of them are very pro-Trump. <laughs> some of them uh, have no problem with a guy like Trump getting in there. So how they would convince the House to turn to Gary Johnson is beyond me. I, I mean, I, I'm relatively certain they wouldn't pick Hillary Clinton because we all know House Republicans. House Republicans despise Obama, they think he's a Marxist, you know, Kenyan, whatever, <laughs> they think he's a foreigner, they think he's a Manchurian candidate, I'm not kidding when I say these things actually show up in polls when you ask not only, you know, run-of-the-mill Republicans, average Joe Republicans, but also Republican Congress people, so maybe they know something I don't, and maybe they know that 
if we can just throw a wrench into this election, well, then we know that the House will pick uh, Gary Johnson, and then that would be great. I don't know, but clearly they're trying to jack some very important states from Donald Trump and make it so that you just throw a wrench in his whole thing because nobody is under the impression that McMullen, Evan McMullen can win when Evan McMullen's friends and family's, uh, fa family was like, oh, you're running? What the fuck are you talking about running? Running for what? Running for class president? Is that what you're running for? So... Uh, when they say never Trump, the establishment Republicans, they fucking mean it. They really mean never Trump. And at least among the establishment Republicans, so not necessarily the Republicans in Congress, but the establishment elitist Republicans, the ones who were in the former Bush neocon circles and stuff like that, they're people who probably would genuinely be more okay with, though not ecstatic about, a Hillary Clinton presidency than a Donald Trump presidency. And... The thing is, at least from my perspective, their reasons why are the most problematic thing. Because it's not like they look at the shit he says about, hey, let's kill civilians and let's torture, and they're genuinely outraged about that. They don't give a fuck about that. They were responsible for killing civilians and torturing. These are former Bush people. But they look at him and they think, I don't know, he's such a wild card, maybe the donors can't control him. And that's why they're against Trump. Now, I think that at the end of the day, They'd be happy to learn that when, if slash when Trump gets in office, he he can go either way. Either they're right and he could be just in, an incredible wild card and can do whatever. Nobody could fucking predict it. Or Trump can, because he's yearned his whole life for official recognition from the elites. He wants to be one so bad. He's a fake billionaire and he's always been rejected by these circles. He might end up being the most establishment subservient president ever to corporate interests and to wealthy donors. So we're going to have to wait and see, but they don't want to roll the dice on that. And while I agree that uh, Trump would be an epic disaster in office, the thing that annoys me to no end is their reasons why they, would, that why they dislike Trump. All the things that I look at and I say that may be actually a good part of Trump, like being against TPP, for example. Pretending to be against corruption. Like, these are things that I look at that and I'm like, oh, if he b means that, that's great. But they look at that and that's the number one thing for them that's problematic and troubling is, oh... He says he might stop this giant donor orgy that we have. So that's why they're against him, and that's why they're fighting, and that's why they're running Evan McMullen here. By the way, I keep looking at the paper because I can't remember his fucking name. That's how irrelevant he is. So we'll see. Uh, they think he can throw a wrench into Utah. They think he can throw a wrench into Arizona and Idaho. And by the way, I'm skeptical of even that. I think their best hope to, if they really want to spoil it in that sense, is to... Have donors give a shitload of money to Gary Johnson, which props him up, gets his name out there more, he'll get more media coverage, uh, and then make it so that bump him to try to get to 15% in the polls. Uh, you know, Mitt Romney's not that popular, Jeb Bush is not that popular, George Bush is not that popular, but if he endorses, if they endorse, I should say, Gary Johnson, well then in those circles, they do have some sway among some people, and would it be enough to get him from the 10, 12% he's currently at to 15%? Yes! Yes! So he gets in the debates, and it's it's a whole new ball game. So their real best bet, if they really want to stop Trump, is pump up, pump up, pump up Gary Johnson, and that would split the conservative vote between Donald Trump and Gary Johnson, the, I, albeit Trump would get much more of that, but it would be enough of Gary Johnson to get it so that you basically hand the election to Hillary. And the question is, do they want a Hillary presidency over that of a Donald Trump presidency? And the answer might be yes. So really strange times. We have a new weirdo running for president, and he's specifically to stop Trump from getting into office.